We're in a new chapter, chapter 5. We're going to talk about how to use multiplication facts. This is 5.1, and we're going to describe patterns in a table. There are different ways that we can describe a pattern in a table. We can describe a pattern across the rows. And we can describe a pattern in the columns. A pattern is an ordered set of numbers or objects in which the order helps us predict what will come next. For this first one, it goes 5, 10, 15, 20. We're adding a 5 to the previous number. So we're skip counting by 5s, aren't we? The next one, 5 more than 20, would be 25. The pattern is to add 5. For this one, it goes 2, 4, and then we don't know that number, then it goes 8 and 10. We look at the pattern, 2 is being added to each number to get the next number, so we can count on 2. We can also see that it's going down by 2, so we could count back by 2's from 10 to 8. So do you know what number goes there? 2 more than 4? or two less than eight, that would be six. That would be the number to complete the pattern. One toy dog uses four batteries. So how many batteries are needed for six toy dogs? We can describe a pattern in a table. Here's the number of toy dogs and the number of batteries that would be needed. It told us that one toy dog uses four batteries. That means two toy dogs are going to need eight batteries. For this row, we're going to add one more. So it's going one, two, three, four, five, six. For this one, we're going to add four more. Four plus four is eight. Eight plus four is equal to twelve. Twelve plus four is equal to sixteen. Sixteen plus four is equal to twenty and 20 plus 4 is equal to 24. This one is actually skip counting by 4s, isn't it? It's adding 4 more to each number. We look for a pattern to complete the table. We can look across the rows to see that the number of batteries increases by 4 for each dog toy. So for it to increase by 4, we would add 4 and get 24. The pattern is to add 4 for the number of batteries. We can look for a pattern by comparing columns in the table. We can multiply the number of dog toys by 4 to find the number of batteries that are needed. 1 times 4 is equal to 4. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. 3 times 4 is equal to 12. 4 times 4 is equal to 16, 5 times 4 is equal to 20. So for 6 toy dogs, we need 6 times 4. We need 24 batteries. That means the rule for this table is to multiply by 4. For each row, we add to find the next number. We added 1 each column, we multiply the top number by 4 to find the bottom number. We multiply the 2 times 4 to get the 8, the 3 times 4 to get the 12, and so on. So the rows we added going across, and for the columns, we multiplied by the top number and by our rule, times 4. If we need three packs of batteries and there are eight batteries in each pack, how many batteries do we need? We use addition to add eight batteries for each pack, and we use multiplication to multiply the number of packs of batteries by the number of batteries in each pack, the eight. And knowing the number of batteries in one pack helps us finish the table. If we know one pack has eight batteries, we can do 2 times 8 to get 16 batteries, and 3 times 8 to get 24 batteries. So we're going to need 24 batteries. 
We can describe the pattern in a table, then complete the table. This table is showing the number of pints, and this is the number of cups. So if we have one pint, we have two cups. Can you see the pattern? If we have two pints, we have four cups. So what's the rule? We need to multiply each number of pints by whatever one unit is showing for the cups. It's two. So our rule is to multiply each number of pints by two. So if we have three pints, we need to multiply that by two, and three times two is equal to six. So three pints will be equal to six cups. For four pints, we need to multiply it by two. Four times two is eight. So four pints will be eight cups. Knowing what one unit is equal to will help us finish the table. For this table, it says number of gallons and number of quarts. One gallon is four quarts. So what would two gallons be? What's our rule? This unit of one gallon being four quarts tells us our rule. We need to multiply each number of gallons by four. So for two gallons, we need to multiply that by four. Two times four is equal to eight. So two gallons will be eight quarts. Three gallons multiplied by our rule four, three times four is 12, so three gallons would be 12 quarts. And four gallons, we multiply it by four, four times four is 16, that would be 16 quarts. In sixth grade, we'll learn that the rule for each table is the function. You'll actually call them function tables. A function is like a job. So the function of a coffee maker is to make coffee. And the function of a toaster is to make toast. And the function of this table is to multiply by four. And this one is to multiply by two. We can find the pattern, then complete the table. So let's take a look at what the numbers are doing going across in the rows. It's got flowers and petals. The flowers, we have two, four, six. Do you see the pattern? We're adding two to each number. So six plus two would be eight. We'd put an eight there. Let's look at the petals. They're going 10, 20, something, then 40, then something. What happened between these two numbers? We have 10 plus 10, don't we? So if we add 10 to the next number, then we'll get the missing one. So 20 plus 10 would be 30. So now we have 10, 20, 30, 40. Do you know what would go here? 10 more than 40? That would be 50. What is the rule, though? We don't have a 1 here. We have a 2 and a 10. What did we need to multiply by 2 to get 10? 2 times what is equal to 10? Well, 2 times 5. Does it work for the other ones? 4 times 5 is equal to 20. Yes, that works. 6 times 5 is equal to 30. Yes, that works. 8 times 5 is equal to 40. Yep. It works for that one too. And 10 times 5 is equal to 50? Yes. We need to make sure that our rule works for all the numbers in the table. So our rule is to multiply each number of flowers by 5. That's the rule for this table. So remember we can describe a pattern across the rows by adding. We can describe a pattern in the columns by multiplying. And if we know how many one unit would be equal to, then we know what to multiply to finish the table. If one unit is four, then we know to multiply the rest 
times 4, that that would be the rule. We're going to talk about equations and unknown numbers in equations next in Lesson 5.2. I hope you'll be there, and I hope you have a really good day. Bye.